All right, guys. Thank you all again for joining us. Today is July the 10th, a little bit after 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I want to thank you all uh, for taking time out of your summer day uh, on the Saturday to come in and meet with us uh, with the International Association of Woodcarvers. Uh, this is our first meeting that we've had since uh, June, so uh, thanks again for coming out. Um, today we've got with us Nate Ellerton. Uh, I think he's coming to us from Ohio. Uh, Nate's originally from uh, Southern Michigan. He's going to be talking to us a little bit about his carving journey and actually going to be doing a demonstration on carving the green man. So we'll get to Nate here in just a few minutes. Uh, coming up on our monthly meetings, uh, again, we're only meeting once a month through the summer. So uh, our next live meeting will be August the 14th. Uh, on the 14th, we'll have Susan Hendricks that's going to be coming on with us. Uh, she carves wood spirits and she has a book out. Um, so tune in on August the 14th for the live meeting with Susan. And then on September the 11th, we have Dan Regat that's coming on. Uh, he's known as Dan Hero on Instagram. Uh, he's, he carves small figures, uh, some unique stuff. So go out and check out Dan and uh, join us on September the 11th for his meeting. I uh, want to remind everybody, we're opening up this Zoom room on uh, Friday evenings, starting at 6 p.m., uh, so that people can just come on and uh, chat with each other, ask questions, talk about carving, shoot the breeze. Um, it'll be the same Zoom meeting number. Uh, we're putting a password out there now so people can kind of come and go as they please. Uh, the password's always going to be carving. Hopefully that's easy for everybody to remember. Uh, we'll post that on social media so everybody can uh, remember to come out and uh, join in and in that. Uh, you just never know who might be in the room when you come in and for those meetings. Um, in today's meeting, we're going to do a giveaway. Uh, Shoff Tools has been generous to donate a 12-piece uh, foundation carving set. Uh, we had a, um, a way that you could go out on our page and register for that giveaway, and uh, Tom's going to be doing that giveaway at the end of the meeting. Again, that's a 12-piece carving uh, tool set. Uh, check them out at Shaff Tools. at S-C-H-A-F-F -F Tools. Um, and uh, they're going to be doing some uh, new, new tool sets coming out. Uh, talk to them this week, and they're talking about doing some palm tools and some other things, so uh, check them out. Uh, we also have uh, Healthy Knives uh, that has been generous enough to donate this uh, carving knife. It's a two-inch rough-out blade. Uh, we're actually doing a live auction in the meeting today for this knife. I'll go ahead and show everyone two inch blade. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do it like we've done it similarly in the past. Um, just go out in the chat, start making your bids out there. The highest bid at the end of the meeting will win the knife. Uh, we'll ask for that person to stick around at the end so that uh, we can gather your information, uh, get the payment on that and get the knife out to you. Uh, the money that's uh, raised from that auction is going to go towards these Zoom meetings. We have to continue to pay for this Zoom access. Uh, so we appreciate Helby Knives uh, donating that and helping us uh, and making sure that we have the funds available to continue to finance this, uh, this meeting every month. Uh, it looks like we already have one bid out there. So thanks, Dave, for that. Um, also, Helby wanted me to remind you all that there's a carving show that's coming up at Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Uh, that's going to be in September on the 18th and 19th. Helby is going to be there. Uh, they're asking for everybody who's in the region that uh, can make it to come out to that show. Again, it's September 18th and 19th. If you want more information, it's uh, wisconsinriverwoodcarvers.org. Uh, go out and check them out on the internet. Um, and again, that's September 18th and 19th. Uh, just a couple other things. I'm going to try not to put you all to sleep before Nate comes on. So, um, one thing that Tom and I have been working on, uh, we've been working on a new podcast that we're going to do uh, to try to fill in the gaps between our monthly meetings. Uh, that podcast is now available out there. It's called The Carving Podcast. Uh, you can find it on uh, Podbean, Amazon Music, Spotify, and very soon you'll be able to find it out on iTunes. Uh, we did our first uh, meeting with Larry Green um, a week or two ago. Uh, that's available out there. It's also available on our YouTube page, so go out and check that out. Uh, there'll be more meetings coming up uh, through the podcast that you'll be able to go out and give a listen to. Again, the way to find that is just to go to one of those sites, Podbean, Amazon Music, or Spotify. Search the, the Carving Podcast, and it should pop up there for us. 
Uh, we want to thank Dave Levy, who's on here with us today. He's our uh, sound man. He's the uh, the editor of the audio. Uh, he's kind of the behind the scenes guy that's helping us with the podcast. So thanks, Dave, for all your work on that. Uh, any of the sound bits and stuff that you'll hear on that, Dave's done all of those. Then one other thing, just want to remind everybody about the Wood Carving Academy. Uh, it's still available out there. There's going to be some workshops coming up. Uh, Janet Cordell is going to be doing a workshop in August on an American bison. Uh, September, she'll be doing a uh, female face. And then Dave Stetson has a uh, class lined up in September, carving caricature expression. Uh, so make sure you go out, check out those workshops. If you're interested in signing up for those, reach out to Janet and uh, Dave, and uh, they'll be happy to get you signed up. And I feel certain there's going to be other classes coming up as well, especially as we enter into the fall. Uh, so again, keep an eye out on Wood Carving Academy to check out all that stuff. Having said all of that, and I appreciate you all's patience as I go through all that, but it's been a while since we've had meetings. Uh, I want to go ahead and turn it over to Nate. Again, Nate's uh, uh, a wood carver out of uh, Ohio. Uh, he's originally from Southern Michigan, and I hope I have that right, Nate. Um, he, he does a lot of carving in cottonwood bark. Today he's going to be talking to us about carving a green man and going through a demonstration. Uh, so at this time, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Nate. Nate, I appreciate it. Uh, just don't forget, if you want to uh, if you want to join in on the auction for the Healthy Knife, make sure you're putting that information out in the chat. And uh, Nate, I'll give a, a look to that chat every so often. If we have questions, I'll throw those out to you. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, sir. Great. Great. Well, it's really glad Blake and Tom asked me to come and pretty honored of that. I know there's been some incredible carvers that are watching and um, are, have also been guests. Um, I live in Temperance, Michigan. And so uh, I'm two miles from Ohio, so I'm not quite a Buckeye fan, but uh, I pastor a church. We've lived here 25 years and uh, started the church. Literally, I didn't know anybody here. We knocked on doors, started in our living room. And that's kind of what led me into carving. And, and uh, Blake asked if I just share a little of my, my story. When I got into carving, I, I don't draw, I don't paint pictures, I can't draw I can barely print legibly that's why I learned to, to learn to type um I I do love music I do play a couple musical instruments but about in 2006 2007 I had really the church was growing I'm working all the time thinking about stuff all the time and kind of was um not really happy with with uh, my level of peace or contentment which is isn't what I preach the Lord does for our lives. And so began to wonder. So I went down to Tennessee to visit a friend in Newport and uh, this man pastor down there. And um, he said, Hey, I got into something. I met this guy in Gatlinburg and uh, he gave me a lesson. His name was Billy Reynolds. And I know many of us know Billy. And he said, uh, I'd like to show you. And he took me out in his shop and he put a chisel in my hand, you know, and I kind of ran it up the wood and that feeling, that sound, that, that satisfaction, kind of the way that he had his shop set up was kind of inviting. And I, I thought I could get into this. And he gave me a little book and he said, here's how you, you carve a man. So he was starting to carve mountain men and spear faces and he's making a couple of attempts at some attempts at some Native Americans. And uh, really, he just really taught me. Uh, I started getting into carving started with the little hand stuff and of course the boot and you know the dog and and i uh, just really loved it but was always frustrated you know that i wasn't getting stronger well i had three kids and they were in all sports and wrestling and football and lacrosse and involved in the youth group so i didn't those first 10 years i didn't uh i didn't knock it out of the park carving as far as time wise but they grew up and they went to college and they're all married now and and we've been empty nesters in the last few years i've really really poured into some carving um took i remember way back i took a I went and carved with with floyd radigan and celine about an hour from here and really enjoyed somebody that really knew what they were doing i got the books started learning um, but what really really helped me uh, i had a one-on-one -on -one lesson with uh, Alec Lacasse. He lives about 90 minutes north of me and uh, just just really dove into it. And so uh, I'm thankful for Alec and I'm thankful for this guy. This is Marty. 
and uh, Marty took several lessons off of Billy. And tragically, Marty moved up here. I brought him on staff at our church and uh, a botched up gallbladder surgery. And he, he went to be with the Lord way too early, but uh, I have him to thank a carving. Uh, Doug thought it'd be great if I showed you some of my first carvings. And the one I showed the other night, Doug, I got to laid in bed thinking, I said, that's not my first carving. So I went down in the basement where my shop used to be set up and I found my very first carving. And so that's my first attempt at a face. Uh, Oh boy. So, uh, but I remember um, getting a book and really following it. He sent me a piece of, of uh, I think this is red, red cedar. And I carved this guy, man, I thought I was really a carver, man. Look at that nose. Whoa. But I, I thought, man, that, and I am a carver. I am, this is great. And then I just started reading books and watching videos and wasn't really getting any better at carving. And so here's a little tip maybe uh, somebody gave me, I think it was, I think it was Marty. Marty said, you know, you're reading a lot about carving. You're looking a lot about carving. You're online a lot about carving, but you're not really doing any carving. You're just reading about it and you're in the community a little bit and you need to get out and really carve because I was kind of lamenting to him that, you know, I'm not getting any better and you're getting better and your work's so good. And he's like, cause you just, you got to carve and you got to, you got to do it. And so uh, I love, I love wood carving. I'd love it if I wasn't doing this, I'd love it if nobody knew. And uh, I had to learn to just really enjoy what wood carving has done for my life. And uh, it's, I, I say it's a gift to my life. The piece that I found, you guys know, getting out in your shop or your place where you you work and uh, turning on some good music or carving in silence. And I just love carving. And I used to want to finish every project and see it and post it and show everyone. And now I just, just have really found contentment with the process, just doing it, not always finishing it because I don't finish a lot of my projects like I probably probably should have. So that's been great. I've loved the carving community. I have not met a mean carver. I don't know if they're if you're out there, if you're on Zoom and you're mean, I, I don't want to meet you because I, I want to be able to say 20 years later, I've never met a mean carver. Everybody is helpful. Everybody is nice. Everybody shares their tips. I've been to a couple shows. I haven't been to, I, I just as a spectator, I've gone to shows. I, I've never had a booth at a show. I've never shown my stuff like that. Um, but uh, <laughs> I've had some carvers that have really taken time with me and talked to me. And back when I was a, a noob and I was down at Dayton to the artistry show, which sadly is not happening anymore. I was just talking to famous carvers. I didn't know they were that famous and just, they were all just kind, they took time and uh, really appreciate that. And so the carbon community has been great. And so we got guys in our church and you know, not everybody in church wants to study the Bible in a small group. So I started a small group for wood carving and uh, another guy who carves, Dean, he kind of has taken the leadership over and we get together and men talk about stuff when you got tools in your hand and uh, important stuff of life. Maybe stuff you don't feel comfortable talking to everybody about but this place has become a safe place and a fun place. And we've really enjoyed that. So I've enjoyed the community. I've enjoyed the relationships, the friendships, got some kids in our church that I want to get into carving and, and uh, got just some great stuff. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. I start out in my basement, just kind of carving down there. I moved out here to uh, my garage. It's an older garage. It used to be a Model T garage. It's got two little sides. I never pulled a car in here, so I got a yard barn to get all the all the yard stuff out of here, so I can have more space to carve and more space for groups or classes. And uh, I really just enjoy that. So I've got heat here, got it insulated. Uh, wife hasn't let me get air conditioning yet. I wanted some central air out here, but that hasn't happened. So. She's, she's got her eye on kitchen stuff, so I don't know about that. So, But I enjoy carving, and uh, I'm going to take some time. I love – I'm not the best carver. I'm not even in a class with most of you, so being asked to do this is an honor.
bad. So some tips I want to give you incredible stuff. Don't be discouraged by that. Um, take some classes, do this kind of stuff. It just speeds up your learning process. Uh, it, it helps you not make, I mean, it's good to practice carving, but not if you're practicing wrong and you're just doing the wrong thing over and over and over. And, and that's, that's not good. Take some classes. Um, I can't tell you how valuable it was to me to spend. It was like three years, once or once a year, maybe I, I took a day with Alec and he still, he still does that. I know his time is kind of limited now because he's got his online wood carving school and uh, he's got some other uh, entrepreneurial stuff going on, but just taking time to one-on-one -on -one asking and seeing it done has been incredible. And a lot of people say, you know, I can't carve. I can't, I could never do that. And I just encourage them or they say to you guys have heard it. You're so talented, man. You can just look at a piece of wood and just see what's in there. And I'm like, it doesn't, it doesn't always work like that. It kind of evolves and, and I'm not talented. I didn't wake up one day and start carving wood. We had to learn the processes and the steps and the grains and the knives and the tools and the sharpening and and that didn't just miraculously come to us and it wasn't some gift we've just rained down on heaven we enjoy it and that's probably the talent is that we really enjoy it but we've all had to work hard we've all had to learn and so uh, i love that part of it and of course meeting all the new friends that we've gotten to meet just to keep enjoying it so something i like to do when when i see someone's stuff online is i like to see their shop I'm always looking for ideas on how to maybe improve the shop or am I doing something wrong or is something inefficient? And uh, I've learned there's no right way. Every, every shop is very personal, um, but I'll show you my shop a little bit if we go to this camera. Um, uh, we'll turn this around. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna work on this piece of wood. Um, I use this this ram a lot for the pupils in the eyes. I don't, I don't, when I do this, I like to use just, just wood, but um, I got a bench here. Somebody gave me, drug it out of their barn. I got my light on there. Uh, I got an Eli ball vise that I use and I'm working on this piece of butternut um, for a full bust. I had a guy message me on, on Instagram and he said, Nate, how come you never do ears? And I, I messaged him back. Well, ears are hard. He said, stop being a baby and carve some ears. And so this will be my second attempt at ears. The first attempts up there. Yikes. But hey, you got to keep at it. Uh, been working on this guy, Spalded Maple. This is an old barn bean from a barn taken outside of town. And uh, man, that stuff's like, like cement. But um, this is a shop. And I think one thing is really important is, of course, the sharpening. Your shaft tools, I do, uh, I was, I'm super impressed with shaft tools, uh, how sharp they came, how they hold their edge. And for the price, you can get into carving. Like guys don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of dollars in carving. You can get into carving with a good knife and, and you know, the shaft. And I got a review online for that. Um, I, I'd use the Burke, I got the John Burke sharpening system. It was given to me as a gift. What a, what a great gift. I've had it for probably 10 years. And of course the work sharps are really great, really great too. So I think you can all see some of that. Got a used bandsaw and, and then we got enough room here for our group and I throw up that little table. I do like that jaw horse. Alex showed me one of those once, man, and I got one. And, uh, and I really like how you can just put something on there and really really pond on that and I'm starting this a piece of butternut I got some butternut down here give it to me a guy found in Ohio in an Amish barn because he, he said the Amish wouldn't use them because they don't make good furniture they're too soft and he gave me these little giant logs of butternut so it's pretty great I do like to go outside and do a little power carving once in a while and when I was down south I got some interesting pieces of driftwood I'm going to study and look at and some fun stuff with so i'm enjoying that enjoying carving it's uh it's a great thing so let me readjust this a little bit so i'm going to do a green man so we're going to start with a piece of cottonwood bark 
And this, of course, is the, the thick stuff from this. This is from Plains. This is from out west. But um, I have been buying from Canada. Um, Western Cottonwood Bark has been doing great for me. And this is Carl Schumann, I think, Sham. And uh, I just got a new order from him, which which I really like. And this stuff's, this stuff's been good. So um, when you do a, what I like about Green Men is how versatile you can be. Here's one of my first Green Men here. This, this was a, uh, copy of a picture from the castle in Norwich, I believe. And green men were in some of those uh, cathedrals in Europe before the 1600s. And they really don't know why. They don't know if they were to attract, you know, the woods people in or the leaves and vines or whatever's coming out of green men represented new life. They don't, no one really knows, but this is kind of, the one I'm working on now, I have one in my office that got some attention and got me into the carving magazine in the UK. And so I like green men because you still use all the rules of doing a face. And I started this one last night to kind of give us a, a look and when we get in that direction, because in this, um, in this amount of time, I won't be, be able to finish the whole thing, of course. And so I'm going to, I'm going to start it from 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 here and so usually the first couple layers of cottonwood bark are pretty are pretty dry and so i just kind of i kind of just take those off before I get going that's too much but what it is I'm just going to round it up a little bit With the cottonwood bark, any of the these big cracks you can sometimes see on the sides that are going to cause problem later on. But uh, we got some glue for that. That's what that's made for. And uh, that's just... usually, if you're carving a realistic face, you'd you'd want to bring it. I'll make the wood begin to look like a U or a bringing a point in the middle where the nose would come out. Green men, I guess the fun part of them is you can be very creative with them and uh, put wherever you want, you don't know what you want to do. So I'm going to have maps had my workbench all cleaned up today. Not that anyone cares. So when you're doing a green man, you can do leaves and vines and the kind of leaves. Some do them with oak. Oak leaves are not as much fun for me. Uh, I'm not good at oak leaves, but usually start instead of like in this area where you would start the face, you start the, the eyes in the kind of, not in the middle of the head, but in the middle of the wood. Because uh, you're going to use all of this for, for leaves. And how many leaves you want to put on that, that one over there has like 31 leaves. You got to detail those if you put them on there and the detailing isn't quite as much fun, but uh, detail really looks nice. Um, I have uh, the first art show I entered, I did a green man and they actually, uh, the art, they, they picked it and they bought it and it hangs at the library in town and that was a green man with 27 leaves and I hated detailing them, but when you're done, it catches people eye. And I put some green men online. I do have a Etsy account. I think it's Nate Wood Sculpting and uh, they just sell quick. I have some down in Toledo at an art gallery and uh, they just really, they go, they go easy. So, if, so we'll look at this here. So if you do a, a face and you know the, the third, if this was the, the forehead and those were the eyes and the nose, you know, and the chin would be somewhere in this area, but you don't have to worry about any of that because it's all gonna, it's all gonna fill in with, with leaves. And so you don't have to, you know, do how we'd normally do a face. 
this is all going to be leaves. So the way I'm going to do this one, the way I like to do it, because I started it this way, is I want to I want to make those leaves move to the side a little bit. I don't always do that well down here, but I kind of like moving them to the side. And I don't know if this is a birch leaf or whatever kind of leaf it is, but you just begin to, to draw them in. And this will just give you kind of a, a view of what this thing is, is going to look like. And like I said, man, I'm not a drawer, but when I get to where I got to be, I'll be, I'll be okay. So the middle line, you can make these turn a little bit if you want. I like it when uh, green men are look kind of sneaky and they kind of have their eyes, you know, going a different, a different direction. It just adds, you know, so when I, when I did this one, I really bulged those eyes out. They don't have to look quite as realistic because it's a fantasy carving. So I bulged the eyes out. I made them look, look, you know, the opposite way of the way the leaves are kind of leaning just to give it some, some flow, some life, some mystery. And that's, that's what is important. And so when we get those leaves in, we're going to look at how you make the shadowing pop out because shadowing is really what uh, really pops carvings out going deeper. And so I remember Marty used to tell me, Alec used to tell me, just go deeper, deeper. And so that's important. So I'm going to start out with the 915. I'm going to try not to hit my camera here too much. So I'm used to carving this way. So I'll put this, this off here. It's a little tougher than that last piece. Right across for the eyes. Eyes are going to be in here. And you don't, you're, you're going to follow all the same rules that you had with this as if you're doing a, a regular face at the beginning. Just drawing in that nose because the nose is going to show. And then you decide how much of the mouth you want to show. If you want to show a little lip. If you want to make the leaves all through that spot, you know, that's, that's just totally up to you. It's creative. And that's the great thing about, you know, green men is how creative it is. And so carp here for a second. Using um, the Swiss made files, I love those. I love the shaft tools; have been great. Um, of course, the knives I use. These are probably my two go-to's: Don Don Mert Specials, um, but the Helvy knives. These are I just love that blade, rise and stuff, and whatever knife this is, I've been really enjoying. Um, but I do have the Dunkel I like. And it's my first knife, you know, the trusty old flex cut. You can't, it's lasted uh, since I started. That's a, that's a good knife too. So, so everybody's always worried at first that they're going to go too deep with the eyes, but you're not. Because you get that nose has to stick out some. And that point of that nose is the, uh, farthest part of that carving that's coming out of there. I want to take off too much of that sides because I like to sometimes put some leaves on those cheeks. So on a regular face carving, we'd be going off on there and, and uh, taking that out. I'm not going to do that here. All right, look for my 910. I'm gonna, gonna get that nose popped out of there better. Again, I would I would be doing a little different process right now if I was doing a more realistic face to to bring everything back, but I want I might I might want to put some leaves right there. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave some of that. And with that nose, I'm just gonna press it back. And so this is, this is, some of this has got to come off, so it'll be more realistic. I'm 
not liking this piece. But hey, everyone's different. Take what the wood gives you, right? We establish that center line. So if I don't do that, I'll dink that nose up. It looks like I almost already did. Just remember, you know, in carving the nose, man, that flake, that's, that's a spot you don't want to touch. That's going to stick out farther if you looked at the profile. That's what's going to come out the most. And so when you're making some depth for that nose, that's how deep we're going. But when we start doing the leaves, it's going to take it, it's going to take it down. deeper again with the 910. Use uh, both hands on the tools most all the time, even my knives. Cut myself a lot. This cut is not from carving, FYI. It's from carving me the other day for the 4th of July, which everyone thought was pretty funny. My kids did just carve and then carbon meat and whack my hands to them. So every uh, one Tuesday a month, somewhere uh, we have three or four guys and uh, we have a group of maybe goes anywhere from five to 12 guys that carve together. And uh, that's been really encouraging to meet with other guys and carving, and bringing some friends and enjoying being together. Uh, here in Temperance, Michigan. So, uh, good. The nose doesn't have to pop out, even it's not realistic. So it's fantasy. So it doesn't have to be exactly like uh, like the other ones if you were doing realistic face curving. So, so if we float these a little bit, Points can get tricky and, and again you're just filling in. So there's lots of ways to do this. I know the way that um Alec enjoys doing them is he takes uh, a number three or four and just outlines it with his chisel and and I do that if I come four. There it is. So the four is a good curve. You can almost follow follow some curves, but I like to get it started with a with a, a V tool, and uh, I do love the shaft shaft V tool. So I'm again I'm I'm tilting the V tool a little bit, so I'm not Ving right into the wood, but I'm kind of making the end there so that that leaf will pop. We're gonna we're gonna go deep. We're gonna go deep here. I'm making the leaves big, so we don't have to detail a bunch of leaves. Trying to get them move this way more. And you can. fiddle with them later. You're getting an idea. I like I like the leaves even to go down near the head. And the even the style of the leaves, I would somebody said, well I can't do a green man because I can't draw leaves. Once you get it even close and you detail it, you put some edges on it. Or I don't even realize it doesn't look like any kind of tree known to man leaves, but it's just a little more realistic. You put it into it, the better. 
I just don't like sketching on a sketch pad to learn leaves, but it would probably be really good if I did. So the reason I want to go really deep on these leaves and this layer too, because as in the relief carving, you got a couple of different layers, is I want to go deep on these leaves because I want to give them some, some light. And I want to pop the ends up on them. I'm going to, I'm going to show us the, the trick Alec taught me and how to do how to do that. Sure. So this will be gone. And, uh, and so when you have a leaf that's right next to each other, but they're on the same level, you don't have to do much of a different differentiation to pop them out. I'm gonna lean them back a little bit so it looks like they're coming into the into the carving. Again, you have you have this right here. You don't want to lose that line. I'm going to keep it. Just a simple stop cut, which we'll be using a lot with a good green man. Just there's a lot of stop cutting going on. Uh, let me start popping all these leaves out. This leaf right here. What you're doing is every layer of leaves you put on, you're going to lean. The bottom layer into that. So they're growing. Sometimes the four comes in handy. You can flip it from side to side to release those, those pieces of wood. And sometimes if you get sick of using your V tool, you just move to this because this gives pretty good, pretty good contour, contours of the leaves that I use. You flip it. My hand's in the way. Trying to look and see, you know, it gives a good, good contour. You keep it in that. Nice. Isn't that satisfying? You hear that, that crack, creak, the wood, or the wood releasing. Kind of a nice sound. That's what grabbed me. And I'm correcting these leaves as I go. I don't have to be perfect. We got small work to do on them. So what I love about this little housing knife, this baby is worth its weight in gold. You can relief cut up in here. Let's see if you see that. I do have a website. I don't sell stuff on my website, but I just start documenting my wood carving journey. There's some things I'm doing on there. It's Nate Ellerton Wood, so N A T E E L A R T O N, NateEllertonWood.com. And uh, for the fun of it, if you want to look at stuff, if you have a website, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at yours. And uh, Instagram, I'm just Nate Wood Sculpting. I'm going to run this one down here. Yeah, I'm just making rough. I'm just getting an idea where the leaves are going to be. I'm not. I'm not an artist for doing that, but I do feel the flow when you start running your chisel. And one thing about I've learned about carving is it's about the flow. There are not a lot of straight lines in carving. And I learned that with hair, with beard, just everything. There's a lot of, a lot of S's in carving. And these S's that if you can make the carving look move, like it's moving, like it has life, like there's action. But nothing's going to screw up. Look, it still looks like a leaf. It just accents its other side. So I'm not doing a bunch of the same. I always leave it through the ends on me. That's okay. I'm just... So, the reason I haven't put the face in yet is because as each layer is making this carving go a little deeper, I want to see where I land when I get down to the face. I 
Let's see anything uh chat box or anything. Moving it back a little more. Just want to give them some light. Coming in. Got a big bump there. I don't want the leaves to be plastered on the green man's face like his hair is wet and it's just plastered on there. Because that doesn't look realistic. Not that any green man looks realistic. But if you go off the wood and there's no more bark there to finish the leaf, it don't matter. All good. All good. And just turn this blade a little bit. And I like in the edges of it that they have a good outline. And then this leaf kind of goes up there. And I, again, I want tuck. I need depth on the ends of these leaves, and I'm going to show you in a second. I want to tuck it, so I'm going to keep going down. Okay, I'm going in deeper. More tuck. You gotta, just got to watch out for the tips of those leaves. That's a good, good place to a little stop cutting there. And if the tip of the leaf breaks off, <laughs> it happens. It's, I see it so frustrated when something would go wrong in a carving during the process. And I've realized some of my best carvings were carvings that I almost threw away or I almost stopped midway through out of frustration and just threw them away. And I didn't. I kept picking at them or adjust, or you just go deeper. No, there's still, you know, I still have, I still got some meat in there. And then you got to watch how I do this easel thing is kind of the way Alec does. And I see a lot of guys are doing now. I have this screwed into a one by three. And then I can take them on and off, you know, and put them where I need them. And if I'm going out of town or we're going to our in-laws, I can, I can just take this and that jaw horse and my wood thing and I can just carve out in the yard. I usually work in the yard. Coming to life, huh? Probably not gonna put anything there. Gonna think about eyebrows, maybe. Sometimes we don't put eyebrows there, but if I don't do something like this, I'll just whack them out. And then I'm like, why did I do that? So. Going deeper. I don't know about this leaf. So I just, maybe I'll just slam this down and try to look good. Okay, now, heck, Alex showed me with these leaves. So now, you have green men and some of the leaves just look flat and they're just plastered on the head, you know, like some somebody with hair. That's not me, I don't have hair. It just came out of a shower. And so we take the 915 and we just bring it into the edge. Careful with the grain. You don't want the stuff to get chippy, you know? And what I'm doing here is going into the grain. And that, that doesn't look very pleasant. Then you blend it in like the leaf has life and motion. You're adding, you're adding a roll into that leaf. You can even do it, you know, with your knife. Careful. See that? See that chip? Well, you just move that leaf over. Perfect. That's what, that's what I want. Okay. They got that little separation because they're on the same level. I don't like it. 
marker. I don't usually use a black marker. I use a white, a white one, but I want to see it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the leaf looks like it's got a little, like the ends popping up just a little bit. And it doesn't have to be crazy lot to really add to the carbon. You know? And I do sand these a little bit, especially some, so this is going to pop up and then cottonwood bark is tricky when it has those layers and it come down. But what we're going to do is we're going to get under there. So let me, let me get down here a little farther, I'll show you how I, I like to get down there. Again, look at me, I'm just stop cutting. All I'm doing is stop cutting those leaves so they have nice sharp edges because you're going to need that edge when you detail it and you add, add some texture on the edges of those leaves. In there, so when I'm, I'm doing the stop cut, I can just loop that a little bit, get a little flow, get rid of that straight line. Look at that. See that? So, so I know some guys don't do power and. They have a real conviction with that. They say, we don't, I don't need one guy told me to use, use a Dremel, to use power tools. I said, yeah, sometimes it does. Well, I don't use tools. I just use just natural tools. I mean, I, I just said, what, the, the natural kind that they made in the factory, the chisels? A tool is a tool. I said, you can't, you can't gnaw on it with your teeth. I mean, we all use tools. So I have no, no shame in using some tools for power. And so to add, uh, Dimension under here. I have my wheat chair here. I gotta get the, the pedal. Auto. <laughs> gotta send those leaves on. <laughs> here see these dark spots here and i know i should put on it's not bad I, I always usually put on my mask but i'm not doing much here these dark spots in here that is where you're going to get the shadowing what alec taught me about shadowing is shadowing what really makes that carving look alive it gives it depth it, it doesn't look like a painting on a flat canvas or that these leaves are just plastered on the dude's the dude's head. And so you go in there deep in there because you want that dark. And I want to get under the tips of those leaves. I would usually do this about last, but I don't have a lot of all those. So I'm getting in there. Sucking it right up in there. Even that little bit I did, look at what it, look at the, the life it brought to these leaves. And I don't like those marks, you know, I let, I'll clean, clean all those up, of course. And, uh, on these little loops. Cottonwood is great for sanding. And uh, really almost using the sandpaper to sculpt. When you're doing spaces and you want to get down here to the nose. It's just good for sanding. And that doesn't look natural, does it? It's soft and natural. Let's 
So what I'll do is I'll get a little 312 and take out the marks from the, the Fordham or the Fordham wannabe link here. Sorry, everybody works at Woodcraft. It was a gift. I gladly received it. Now I'm going to You want you want to make some tough tough eyebrows here. We got enough meat there. I'm just gonna line them out now. Well, maybe not. Let's just see how they would. We're gonna come when they come down the face. I kind of have an idea now what I got to work with. I know it should pop out more, but again, I'm not I'm not doing. Look, I did it slanted stock cutting so I could get kind of under the I'm not doing um a realistic face which is a fantasy carving so it's okay if I if the nose isn't popping out like a perfect human nose because three men aren't human. I like the mystery of them. I don't know why. I've been in Europe. Um, in some kids' cathedrals, and I always look for the green men. Some are hidden up in the timbers, or carved or sculpted out of something. But it's only in the really old cathedrals. And sometimes they put those dudes in there. I don't know why. Nobody really knows. Everyone speculates. But it was kind of so that people would be comfortable or blended in with the God of the woods or they represented the new life we can have in God. I, you know, I experienced when I was 16 and wayward and in trouble. They told me about the Lord. Never thought I'd be a preacher. And I never thought I'd be a carving preacher. But <laughs> I do love carving. It's just fun to carve with anybody. If you're you're coming to Toledo, I'm two miles of Toledo. I'm off of 23. I'm off of 75. Um, I love to carve with people. I had Tim Bauer down here a few weeks ago. We just carved for a day and just enjoyed lunch together. And you gotta slow down in this world, man. I think carving is great because. And men need stuff to do. TV is not going to make you a man. Netflix, I watch this stuff. I watch the long, I watch the three. That's kind of cool. Got a mustache with his bare hands, but I don't just sit around and watch TV. I don't just sit around like most good men don't. And uh, the relationship they have when you carve. Absolutely incredible. I just think this looks absolutely awful. So I'm going to give me some good honey grip here. I'm going to bring that down into something that's just in my head right now. It's very aggressive honey grip. I'm glad I got this box. So I'm going to do it. To him. That's still a very rough looking. Separate those eyebrows a little bit. Keeping my left hand on the tool just for, for uh, slipping. I don't want to slip and take out one of those nice big fat leaves. And I want to get this face a little bit in before uh, 4 30 so we can detail, detail a couple leaves. Detail. I love setting up a carving, you know, getting it all ready to go, but the detail, when you start detailing, that's when things start popping. Here, I got to decide what I'm going to do here. So, um, so I'm, I'm going to change my white pen. So I'm going to decide what I'm going to do here so I don't take it out, you know? 
like I got a couple spots on here. I got to leave. And again, you don't have to worry about the cheekbones being perfect because you know you got you got you got a leaf over here. Just don't leave room for that eye, right? Okay. Green man got to have cool eyes. Coolest green man with the eyes closed. All right. I haven't perfected that yet. I've tried it a couple times and did all right. Alec in his wood carving school has, has a lesson just on that. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. So, I said I shouldn't mention Alec a lot. I'll give him a big head. <laughs> right, Blake? But uh, he, he is very talented and wonderful. Like I said, I've been no mean carvers. Got to get online yesterday with Blake and Tom and Doug Linker. I was like, man, I'm among the giants of carving. You know, I'm just a little small town preacher, dude. But I've had a lot of guys mentor me in carving, even through their books or their videos. And so if you really want to get into faces, you, you've got to get Jeff, Jeff Fair's book. All of his books, if you can find them, afford them. I've been given a lot of lessons, but I've given some to some guys and got them going. And then I just, I just teach them the way that, you know, I, like I coach wrestling. I coach wrestling the way I was coached. And uh, when you're coaching wrestling, I, I, I teach carving the way I was taught. And I'm just amazed at how talented some people are. Your gifts from on high, you know, every good gift the Bible says comes from above. So I don't know if I'm gifted at carving. I'm sure gifted and enjoying it. And that's a gift in itself. Just enjoying it. If I wasn't good, I'm good. I just gotta enjoy things. People are just not as satisfied in life as they should be. I stuck another one in there. Careful with this edge here, see that you don't damage. So I'm not going super up, but I'll switch to, uh, I'll get my knife up there or I'll, I'll go to a 15 degree. Here's a three, no, here's a 15 three. Can really get, get up there. Again, I want to take it deep this this one's gonna be tricky because it's really gonna be I really gotta bring some of this down to pop this leaf out or it'll look like its forehead is not quite right maybe I'll put part of it again you're just it's as you go so some people say you know man it must be great you see a block of wood and, and you just see what's in there well we have plans maybe for that block of wood um but I don't see, and then, oh, there's something trapped in the block of wood. And then you cut it, you release it. It doesn't, it doesn't really work like that. I guess you can think of it like that. I mean, I'm not that artsy fartsy, but I, I think uh, some, some of the carving just evolved. You just get out there and, and get doing it. And then good things happen as you go. And with cottonwood bark, good things can happen and really bad things can happen. And that's why uh that's why that's why I got this. <laughs> You're gonna carve be friends with I have no shame in, I have no shame in uh having to glue something that pops, especially cotton. One of these leaves split, I'm gone blown. I'm not gonna lose lose a knife leaf end or something just because I'm too proud to do it. So I'm not. All right. Still okay. You still good, Blake? Did that change? We're good? I think we're good. Okay. All right, thanks. All right. Any questions? Or and I think we're having a little bit of a uh, video freezing issue. It's kind of coming and going there, but just go ahead and keep going. I'll just keep going. Okay, boy. 
So I'm gonna blend in that eyebrow a little bit. I think one thing Marty taught me that has been a, a super great for me, he taught me eyes and uh, Billy, Billy taught him eyes. And so he teaches, taught me the way he, he knew and he taught me how to do the eyes. And I, I need to branch out and do eyes differently because all my eyes look, look the same. And a lot of people have carvings and they don't try to do the eyes. But it, it, the eyes are just steps like every other part of the carving. You learn the steps, you can do your great eyes instead of just, you know, making a punch or twirling a, a veiner around or something, which is it's all good. It's your art. You can do whatever you want. But when I see guys, you know, not doing eyes for years on Instagram, I'm like, dude, you got just learn eyes. And Chris Lamontagne told me, for being a baby, carve some ears. That's another great thing about carving. You get challenged without getting offended. And I've always moved forward in my carving when I've been challenged to move forward. Sometimes you got to challenge yourself. Okay, I'm going to slant those nostrils up a little bit. I'm going to just show you a quick way that I do. I'm leaving some stuff in here. I'm going to need that for the eye, the eyes because I'm not going to close the eyes in this one. Okay, I'm just stop cutting, outlining these. I'll go all back through them. But for the sake of time, I want to give you like how you do green man. Remember, you start in the middle. Do your leaves, give them some flow, use the 915, pop them out. Uh, that's not all done yet. I'll, I'll take care of that. And a lot of these flaws go away when you put in the main thing and the main vein in those leaves. Some of these flaws go away. I don't like that. Some leaves look like they're folded. If you're into uh, a sketchbook, you should sketch leaves. I made myself, I don't like doing it, but do it just to help out help get it again i'm going to do a slanted stop cut so i'm going up underneath that leaf because i want to make a little shadow come on i want to make a little shadow on that that leaf and um that makes it look real you want to carve stuff that looks exciting and real. I don't know how deeper I should go on that leaf because I don't want to look, start looking super disproportionate to the head. So there's where we are. Whoa! There's where we are. And you can see it's very similar to that one. And so here on this one, I've already got the eyes ready to go. And so you, what you're doing in the eyes is we're not mounding up as much. I don't mound up as much, but I take an 11. Um, it's 11, three, and I'm gonna make a, like a C inside of the bottom of that eye, or in the middle of that eye. I'm sorry, in the side of that eye. Because that depth and that, that part of the eye is super important. And usually in eyes, this depth, and the end of that eye is the same depth, of course. But and I don't, I don't want to go underneath the nose. Okay, I'm not. I don't want to undercut the nose and get in there. But I just want to get and figure out the depth of that eye and get it kind of ready to cut. And so I don't feel like I have to mound it perfectly because I like you know I, for a while my eyes were just flat they look like they were just traced and then i got over mounding and they look like frogs all popping out of there like they came out of a flying saucer which aren't real or are they and um they look like an alien and so get those eyes ready and then i feel like i need to get this nose a little ready too Seems like it's not. 
Yeah, I'm moving around the carving. There's no laws of what you got to do and when you got to do it. Remember I was teaching a guy once, he says, well, you don't do it at this time. You do this at this time and this after this. And not really. Once you take lessons or you learn from some other people, you get that down and then you kind of do the way that you want to do. But I do want to start popping that a little bit. And I, I use a number seven for that. 710. I don't think this nose is near popped out enough. So please know. Not straight either. But again, this is a green man. So I lost a chunk there, but for the sake of time, we're going to do the nose anyhow. And uh, I could always take everything deeper, which I would probably do, which I'll probably do later. I'll go deeper to pop the nose a little more. And then I'm going to, again, I don't want to take too much away because I don't know what I'm going to need for the leaves down here. Because I'm going to make mustache leaves like here. These are two leaves. I'm going to do a leaf here to look like Colonel Standard leaf. And I got a lip there. Um, you don't have to have a lip. You can just do a deep upside down V in there, V cut or a pyramid cut and pop it. And it, it, it kind of makes your mind think it's a lip or a mouth. This, this is too flat for me right here. Like I really don't like that. And so, you know. Bring it back. Bring it all back. So that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that up. So you don't want it to be a flat face green man either. Let me tell you just no, no secret on how I do a nose. It's the way I do it. I, if I was to have that the middle line again, if you want the nose to be straight, I go in straight with this seven ten, right there. So, see, I'm exactly straight, right in the middle of that nose. And then a lot of you've been taught this way. This isn't new. And then I flip it to get that nostrils. And then I'm going to decide where the ends of those nostrils are. You know, and I'm just eyeing it. If I was really, you know, really wanted to sell this baby, I would probably be measuring a little more. You release some of that. That doesn't look so great. I don't like this nose at all. The nose is uh, tricky. This might be too long. Well, I'm going to run this up here. Again, it's, this is a green man, so I'm not going to worry about trying to do a big the ball and the nose perfectly. But I also don't want it to look like, not look like a nose. I'm going to make my wings here. I'm going to go to my 15. Because this you can use a little bit more like a pencil. Noses are adjusted. I'm not going to spend a lot of time today on the nose because we're running out of time. You know. So eleven. Can I get under there? 
it'll pop. Just flare those nostrils up. Just nine a little bit. Let's pop and suck them out a little bit. So, this is where I knew I would have some problems down like the nose is there. I gotta put some time into studying those. I need to just make more noises, but I can work on that. And if I got some 220, I'm just gonna give myself a little sand. And that knows a lot more. <laughs> but nose is hard. Again, you can do a hard cut here. I went on a real face. But it's fantasy. So we have time. So let's um Let's pass up the nose if I can stand looking at it without fixing it more. Um, I'm just gonna stop cut it. Let's um, let me do the eyes. There's an amount of detail of leaf. I'll do it maybe one eye. The eyes you draw in. I draw them first. I make them more swoopy with a green man. And I draw them both because I want to you know, want them to look realistic. And I kind of an eyes. I will carve what I see. Again, everything's going to be adjusted and altered in that. And then I do take the 15-3 and go to the top first. Again, I'm not going with a great V. I'm slanting my V to a little bit. And I've noticed that if I just do this first, before I cut them, this doesn't flake on the eyelids because this is where the cottonwood bark tends to flake. Up in those eyelids, if you just do a straight cut, I don't know if it's soft enough. And then in this one, you could really flare out the ends. Tuck the bottom underneath that. Powder. So this is the my tool of choice for cutting eyes. I'll put a little more light here for me. I'm going in deep, thinking low, not straight lines. And then I'm going to go up to that carefully, the stop cut. And this is not, not as deep as this, so I got to fix that. So it'll look like the ice slant and fall into the middle. Troubles, it's really flaky in there, like rotten. It's not. I'm pretty sure it's me. That one I showed you over, that first one I did from the Castle Norwich, is a Chris Pie. He did, does that one, which mine doesn't look anything. Yes. You kind of see the top lid there. I'll come over. I can left hand this for some reason. I can, I'm a little ambidextrous. I don't know why. I would think when I grew up, my dad was a painter. And I would trim with my right hand. And he would always say, use your left hand to trim too, so you don't have to move your whole body. I was trimming indoors or something, and so I started 
painting with my left hand too, and trimming in doors and windows with my left hand or cutting in a room and he didn't know it. He was hoping me to be a good carver maybe. You know, when we started the church, that was what I did to, to help feed my family. I didn't have any people. Painted houses and had a sprayer and everything. So now that I got the bottom of those eyes done, I'm going to draw, draw the bottom. I have to draw the bottom. And I don't draw them giant. Remember, we, we perceive that our eyes are gigantic, like real big circles. But they're not. So you draw not what you perceive, but what you see. And so if you see in my shop, I have a lot of pictures of people. And you draw what you see, not what you perceive. So on the edges of the eyes, you do kind of that pyramid cut. I don't know if you can see that. Move out in. Then you do the top in. And then I'm sliding that in. Get that deep right there. I could have mounted those up for the bags. Didn't on this one. And if you notice, I'm not. I didn't cut in the bottom one with the 15-3. Just doing it with the knife. I'll do the bags. And cuts there. Okay, I'm gonna cut. Pop it out. Careful picking, flicking here. Just flick a lot of your eyelids or eyebrows right out. We got the idea of the eyes. So let's look at the um, at 10 minutes left or five minutes left. So let's just, I'll just show you real quick how I would do a leaf. And so the middle part of the leaf has a giant vein that comes down. Let's see if you can see our. Right. A regular leaf has a vein that comes down, and we're not going to gouge that vein out. We're going to pop that vein out. There's a vein that comes down the middle of the leaf, and it's not that that big. Sometimes I just draw a middle line, and then if I draw a middle line, I can go on each side of it. I'm going to take my V tool, and I'm going to lay it down on on it, and I'm going to I'm going to draw straight a line like that with my V tool. And again, these don't have to be perfect because you can adjust them a little bit. And then I'm just going like just a couple millimeters out. You know, it's a little trickier on this one. So you gotta go up up your little thing you made to make that leaf look real. So if, for a while I couldn't do this, it looks like I can't do that. You could take a docker, but you don't want to gouge these in the wood. You want to make them come out of the wood. And again, you, you might not see it good, but if I put a little light on it, oh, there you can see it. So I like, uh, where is that? This little guy. Here, got a little, little bend on it. So sometimes when I get to here, I might just get rid of a few knife marks on the leaf. And then that's why I don't like using pencil down the middle. I just don't like the way I'm pencil marks. And then to sand them off, you compromise what you just carved, you know, a little bit because it takes off pretty quick in time. So I would take, I'll just use, I would take a doctor, but I don't want to walk with it and get it. So I'll look for my 15-3. 
They literally just have. I'll just accent that a little bit. Where I sanded it. So, what I'll do in the leaves is, um, you know, they're gonna they're gonna kind of look like this. And again, you don't have to go. You don't want to do super straight lines, but it's actually not terrible. Now, I'm not I'm not doing a whole lot of pressure here. Now just. Again, I, I'm making a slight S, even on these. If you look at a leaf, they're no straight, straight veins. Maybe I'll extend this. Get into it a little bit and soften that. And just put a hand or two on the end. Okay. So I didn't really get this leaf as thin as I would like, but you can take like 11 veiner. You get in there. So Nate, there's a question in the chat here. Do you ever use a mallet for roughing out? And uh, what are the pros and cons of using a mallet? Yeah. I have used, I, I do, I have used a mallet in roughing out, especially in butternut or anything like this. But I found in cottonwood bark, when you use a mallet, and I have used mallets, if I feel that piece is solid, this piece I looked on the side and I saw some cracks. See, so look at this one. You see, you can see the, the crack in this one. So you really compromise the piece of cottonwood bark if you start banging it you're gonna you're gonna loosen that stuff up because there's a lot of sand in this cotton bark really fine 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 and that's why your tools will you know i'll resharpen these all again uh, because of the sand will dull them down but so maybe that first one i got off but to really hammer it out it's not necessary but like this was a tougher piece if you need to use it you can of course just make sure you have a good piece of cottonwood bark or else what what will happen is you'll you'll loosen up layers and then they'll start flaking off during the carving inside there. Sorry, we're not going to get get we're not going to get to the finish of the eyes, but you get the idea. And so before I I finish detailing that, are there any other, are there any other questions in there, Blake? No, that's the only one. Just uh, one other thing. What do you do with the tips of the uh, the leaves as far as getting the texture on those? Yep. I'm going to do that. So take this one or I take another V tool and I'm turning it and I'm going, I'm taking that out like that. So the tips of the leaves, I'm going to take my, that was the end texture. I'm going to turn this around. I'm just going to get a doctor. Hold on. Because I just want to do it right. I think I use this doctor pretty much only for this. It's more like a pencil. I'm going to drag it. I'm going to drag it and I'm going to make wavy use. So I'm going to drag and make a U. So it looks kind of like a, a map or a road or a road map. You're just going to make these, these coming off of those big veins, maybe off the little vein a little bit. See how it's dragging there? I want to make sure you can see this. So I'm turning and I'm dragging, not the sharp side. I'm just making wavy letter use these little 
little bitty veins. And I'll, I'll get this a little closer so you can see that. So those, those little drags kind of made that come alive. You can't see this as good as, as I can see it. And then to do the edges, I would have really uh, thinned up all of those. I would have thinned up those leaves more. If we had time, I would thin those up more. And then you just take, a, you can take your V-tool choice and you're gonna go on these edges. Be careful, because everywhere you hear a thump, I'm, I'm making something that has to be corrected. Then I get in there and do those, even if I had to stop cut a little, a little V-look. Bigger the leaf, bigger the edge, and uh, that's how I do. So I would do that through the whole the whole thing, and then on this guy I would I do a couple leaves and a mustache, and I'd make I'd like I like to line it up like a mustache. Makes it look kind of cute. But you don't have to do that at all. You, know, you can and then once you get your your line up here this top leaf then you can pop that nose a little more taking the meat out of you know taking the meat out of there and deciding here you know if you want to you know if you want to put in a mouth a little lip, bottom lip, or if you just want to pop it out, it'll look it'll look good. And this leaf kind of looks like you know the smile line. It'll help pop the nose because you got to bring those leaves out so they pop too. So we're at 430, Blake, and um, come to a close. If you want to look at any of my work or finish green men, you can go to nateellertonwood.com or on Instagram, Nate Wood Sculpting, and uh, check it out. If you want to connect, DM me. If you have questions, if you're near temperance, you want to sit up or you want to carve, I'm always looking to carve. If I say a prayer for you, I can leave the office and, and uh, <laughs> carve and call it work. No, I'm kidding. But uh, maybe, maybe a little bit. But thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, been a been a been a blessing, a joy, and I'll finish that up and I'll post it. Thank you, Nate. We appreciate you coming on. And uh, yeah, green men are uh, definitely something we hadn't had before, and I know there's a lot of interest in that. So uh, thank you for the demonstration. Thank you for taking the time out. And I know you got other things to do later on this afternoon, but I appreciate you taking time out of Saturday to come in and meet with us. I'm honored. Um, as we talked about at the beginning of the meeting, uh, we have uh, Chef Tools that's donated a 12-piece uh, foundation set, uh, some of which Nate was using there in his demonstration. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Tom. Uh, but before I do that, uh, before we do the drawing, I just want to remind everybody we're giving or we're, we're doing the auction on the uh, healthy knife uh, that they've donated to us so that those funds can go towards our uh, Zoom membership uh, right now, the last bid was at $150. If anybody's wanting to bid on that, uh, you got a few more minutes to go out and put that in the chat. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Tom so that we can do the giveaway, and then we'll do uh, the final healthy knife uh, at the end. So, uh, Tom, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. All right. Thanks, Blake. And uh, Nate, thank you very much for joining us today. That was amazing. Um, I'm just going to share my screen here. And... We'll do a random draw here. So 
So it looks like number 86 is our winner. And that is Nikki Foley. So Nikki, stay on, stay on with us and we'll get your address. Back to you, Blake. All right, uh, just a reminder that um, our next live meeting will be on August the 14th with Susan Hendricks. Uh, you can go out and check out her work. Um, she has a book on carving wood spirits. Uh, then on September the 11th, we'll meet uh, Dan Hero, uh, Dan Regat, uh, and he'll be uh, presenting on some of his, uh, his miniatures that he carved. So uh, make sure you uh, tune in on August 14th, September the 11th. And then we're hoping uh, in October, maybe we can pick back up on the weekly meetings as uh, it starts to cool down outside and uh, people start coming in and uh, get back to carving. And um, that way we can have some more live meetings. Again, it looks like the last bid now is $155. Uh, we'll leave it open here for just another second more to see if anybody else wants to bid. Uh, we thank you all for taking time out to, to meet with us today. And again, the next meeting will be August 14th. Um, having said that, we'll go ahead and close the option on the heavy knife. Uh, Monica Bloomquist, if you'll stay on with us here at the end of the meeting, uh, we'll finalize that process with you. Again, thank you all for joining us for the International Association of Woodcarvers, uh, where we're trying to share wood carving with everybody across uh, not only the United States, but the world. Uh, if you want to go out and check out our uh, videos out uh, on YouTube, uh, we also have a podcast where we'll be doing new podcasts coming up. Uh, the next one will be with Doug Linker, uh, and that's called The Carving Podcast. And also the live video from those will be out on YouTube as well. So thank you all for joining us on this Saturday, and we'll see you all live again on August the 14th with Susan Hendricks. Thank you all. Thanks, Nate. Thanks, Blake.